around the turn of the 1800s, Britain's imperial expansionism had brought into its sphere of influence much of the territories surrounding the kingdom. However, the territories under the rule of the Oba of Benin remained untouched from any commercial or political exploitation of the British. Tropical items like gum arabia, rubber, palm oil, and a variety of other items became more profitable than slave trade as a result of industrialization. The possession of this untapped wealth, which was the forest surrounding the Benins, would pit the British Empire and the Benin Kingdom against one another. Oba of Ranwe, the rising sun, was the 34th Oba of Benin. He had to deal with a number of internal political issues, including purging the kingdom of his political opponents around 1888. He also fought a war with Akure, a city-state 110 km from Benin, which had declared independence from the empire in 1889. By 1892, Captain H. Hell Galloway, the commissioner and vice consul of the Oil River Protectorate, travelled to Benin to negotiate a treaty with Obao Verame. The treaty's warden practically transferred the power of the Oba to the consul. When you look at a copy of the treaty very closely, you will notice that instead of the Oba's and his chief's signatures, the date was signed with an X, which was a typical procedure among colonial powers at the time. It is easy to conclude that such a treaty was far-reaching for a monarch who was revered by his subject as a god-king to agree to. It is also worth pointing out that the Oba never signed the treaty himself, nor did Galloway and the Oba spoke directly, suggesting that the Oba never understood what the treaty was really about. Unfortunately for the Oba, this would be the kingdom's undoing. The Benin Kingdom did open up trade to the British, but lucrative products such as palm kernel was monopolized by the Oba. Ishekiri traders were enlisted to serve as middlemen between the British and the Kingdom of Benin. Relative peaceful relations were maintained for a while until some series of events which should set the stage for the impending conflict. The city of Eboimi was conquered by the British in the mid-1890s after a punitive expedition which led to its leader Nanaolumu to be exiled. Fearing the same outcome, the kingdom increased its military presence along the southern border. This made tensions so high that the Niger Coast Protectorate asked the Nagos colonial government for assistance in invading the kingdom, but this request was turned down. After a few months, the Ishekiri traders refused to pay the Oba any more tributes, citing the high exorbitant fees of the levies. As a result, Oba Overame imposed a ban on a number of products, including the vital palm kernel, which was needed to manufacture palm oil, which was essential to lubricate machines at the time. As commerce with Benin became more difficult, British traders began to pressure the protectorate administration to depose the Oba. So on the 2nd of January, 1897, the acting consul, General James R. Phillips, set up for Benin to visit the Oba. He was accompanied by two Niger Protectorate Force officers, a medical officer, two trading agents, and 250 African troops dressed as a drumming band. Hearing this, the Oba sent messengers to the consul, urging him to turn back because foreigners were not welcome due to the Yam Festival. Despite the Oba's warning, the consul continued on his voyage, Seeing the consul's party's march towards the kingdom's capital as an act of war, several chiefs of the Oba attacked and massacred the party against the Oba's witches. Only two men survived the incident, which was afterwards termed the Benin Massacre. When news of the massacre reached Britain, headlines such as City of Blood were published, portraying the Benins as a savage race of cannibals which was not the case. Many historical texts claim that the consul's objective was humanitarian, that he tried to end the ceremonial killings that occurred, a pretext that had previously been employed in many cases like those of Pepo of Boni, Jaja of Okubo, and Nana of the Sekiris.
At this point in time, the Benin Kingdom was the last independent and sovereign state in the Niger Delta region. And without any allies, it was forced to defend itself against what it saw as a threat to its civilization. On the 10th of February 1897, the British Empire invaded the Benin Kingdom with a force of over 8,000 soldiers and 9 Imperial naval ships with an objective to either capture or execute the Oba. Sakwamba was the first town to fall to British occupation. Olubo fell the next day and was used as a base of operation to launch the final attack on the capital city. The British met stiff resistance from the Benin army, who held up their assault for nearly a week. However, the city eventually fell due to heavy and indiscriminate bombardment of the city center and residential areas. The sacred city was pillaged and the Oba's ancestral grove was looted. Ivory, bronze, and other artifacts that retained ancestral significance were auctioned off all over Europe to cover the cost of the invasion. The city was burnt down and deserted, with thousands made homeless overnight. In the coming weeks after the invasion of the kingdom, Oba of Rame was captured and humiliated. He was made to rub his head on the ground to show the people of the kingdom he wasn't a god. His ships were trialed and some were executed for the attack on James R. Phillips. The Hobba was deposed and exiled to a town in Calabar, where he remained until his death in 1914. Agio Basinwe, the son of Oba Varame, was sworn in as the Oba and took the name Oba Eweka in honor of the Oba who led Benin through uncertain times. The kingdom was subsequently absorbed into the Niger Coast Protectorate, which opened the region to economic exploitation. Benin is now a beautiful metropolis that serves as one of Nigeria's economic powerhouse. The monarchy continues to exist till this day, with Obayawari II as the 40th Oba of Benin. The people of Benin are very kind and welcoming, and are not afraid to show off their culture, art, custom, and cuisine. They were able to build one of the most influential empires the world has ever seen from a loosely organized chiefdom. The culture, art, and government of a bygone era evolved and adapted to a ever changing world, surviving till this day. Hey, welcome to the end of the video. This video series has been really fun to make, and the positive response I have had from you all has been wonderful. The likes, comments, and subscriptions, and also the emails and Discord messages have been really encouraging. Thank you. If you would like to support this channel through Patreon or other means, links are in the descriptions below. I would like to use this opportunity to thank Britannia, Prout, and Ravion. Without their contributions, this video series would not have been possible. Also, big thanks to Blexin, who helped interpret and pronounce the Benin words in these videos. I will link our businesses in the description below. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you around.